I have this car that I love. A license now, but it's still incomplete because there's a void in that other seat. I need a girl to sit in that seat. <laughs> now, still in the awkwardness of being 16, I found my third love. And she was sexy. She had a confident voice. And I was 16 coming into my physicality. <laughs> And I remember engineering drawing class, every day I'd sit there and she would walk in. And I'd look at those strappy shoes. <laughs> this girl is hot. <laughs> and she was a senior with some sexy shoes, a confident tone. And she would walk into the classroom every day as I sat there in my engineering class. She was going to do art graphics. She was artsy. And I was turned on, and I had, I had nothing to say. But one day, my first words to this girl, my dream woman, was, I'm getting a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought that's all it took. I thought at that moment she was supposed to turn. They, that's pretty hardcore. You're kind of an outlaw. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, the reaction I got was, Okay, little boy, uh, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> As she went on with her work. And I'm sitting there going, why the heck did I say tattoo? I could have said anything. If I don't get this tattoo, I'm a coward, right? Worse yet, I'm a liar. But if I get it, I have to show her, right? I marched into that tattoo shop, 16 years old. I want a picture of my dog, Cheech on my stomach. <laughs> and the tattoo artist backed up, he'd see, he kind of laughed internally, and I, but he didn't understand what was at stake. This was life or death for me. I have two options. I could not get a tattoo. I could kiss her but goodbye. But I know if I don't get it, I'm either a coward or a liar, neither of which I want. Option two, I can get this tattoo. And if I get it, I gotta show her. And if I show her, I gotta talk to her. And if I speak, she's gonna fall in love. <laughs> survived. I survived that operation and that turning point following Monday, I walked in like an astronaut returning from the moon. Walked straight up to her. Hey, I got it. And I don't think she was still impressed. But you know what, she said yes. She said yes, and I remember our first date. Pure romance, but you remember those jitters, right? You're kind of nervous. We were in my super. Sun was blazing. The top was off. Wendy's drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> Telling a romantic tale here. <laughs> we creep off to the window, and what happens at a drive-thru when, when you're with somebody else? They gotta lean over you a little bit, right? So I'm sitting there like this. And she says the sexiest poem I've ever heard. Said cheeseburger, extra pickle, frosty fry with a side of ranch. Thank you. <laughs> this girl can talk in poems. <laughs> As we get this food, we drive back to her house. And again, this is our first meal together. This is big time stuff, but it starts to sprinkle. She runs inside, takes the food. I have to drive back home. I live five minutes away. I'm going to go get the top. I'll be back before that hamburger's cold. So I'm busting back home. It's still starting to sprinkle. I get home. I take the top from the garage, set it on top. I can't waste those 13 seconds. Those 13 seconds to hit the wrench on the four corners, so I just say, I'm just going to drive slow, no big deal. Okay, so I'm heading back, and you know when you're going down Asbury, and you take a right onto Woodruff, there's that little hump, where if you hit it just right, you still see all the scrape marks, you just, and you elevate, and it's real fun, and I do it every time. So in my 16 year old head, out of habit, I see it, and I punch it, and I hit it, and all of a sudden, 
it's raining again. I look in that rear view mirror just in time to see my top slam on the road behind me. I hit the brakes, I turn it around, go get my top, I'm devastated. I'm out there in the middle of the road picking that top up, throwing it in the back seat. Oh man, I'm a dead man. I, mean, I get home, so I drive home, I'm in the garage hitting it with a little sledgehammer, trying to knee it out, trying to get anything, anything I can do to recover from this. Because I know when my parents come home, I gotta explain what I did. So I'm still beating this thing. I never got it to fit right though. Every single time. I owned that car for eight more years. And every time it rained, a little stream of water trickled down and landed straight on the front of my pants. I drove with a cup just in case it rained. And that was my punishment. My punishment for just jumping the gun, trying to get back to that girl so quick. But you know what else I lost out on? That first meal. That first cheeseburger, that m magical moment. I don't know if she ate it. I don't know if she saved it for her brothers. I'll we went to go see our first movie, Jerry Maguire. And the main character, Renee Zellweger, in that movie says, I love him. I love him for who he wants to be and for the man that he almost is. I love him. So, 18 years later, I still have a Toyota Supra. It's, I've upgraded, though. I mean, I, it used to be an 87. I have an 88. <laughs> And I still have this tattoo, so when I'm riding my Supra, my dog's with me. And that girl that sits in that seat is the same girl. So I say, love. It's innocent, right? It is exciting. And it is most definitely awkward. But when you bring it all together, it's completeness. Melissa Marie Collins. I already have a tattoo. I'm not getting another. <laughs> but you still wear sexy shoes. You still have that confident voice. I hope I've become the man that I'm supposed to be. Melissa, I love you. You complete me. And you say. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Madam Toaster.